the last time, well, the only time and last time I ever met Easy E was at the tunnel. tunnel. And so that was like two days before he died. He was in there with Ice Cube. Remember they had beef? Yeah. And it was bugged out to me because they was in the tunnel talking to each other together. And I was like, oh, sh Support for today's episode comes from True Classic. This brand new sponsor has the absolute best fitting t-shirts. Their t-shirts taper off towards the bottom, but fits tighter around the chest and shoulders. Not only is finally getting the t-shirt designed for the male's body, but the first thing you'll notice is how the soft t-shirt is. It's brilliant, yes. Absolutely gorgeous. True Classic doesn't just stop at tees. They are your one-stop shop for men's essentials from polos and workout shirts with the same flattering fit to boxes, briefs, and all the other top-notch gear, quality and affordable prices. They have a pack built on their websites where you can make custom bundles of all their products. And for the big boys out there, True Classic style. Upgrade your wardrobe with True Classic. Get 25% off and at the trueclassic.com with code HOTBOXING. Free shipping it includes on purchase over $100. That's 25% off the trueclassic.com with code HOTBOXING. Hey, this is another episode of Hot Boxing, and today we have the quintessential, the baddest motherfucker, Joey Crack. I'm woo, Mike woo. Tyson, and this is Angie Martinez. Co-host, duties today. All day. We're <laughs> partners, not co-hosts, we're partners. Angie, partners. I'm proud of you. You're, you're we're working partners. hard, Angie. I'm yeah, no, 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 you're working out here. No, I'll be honest, this is not work. I was just telling Styles Peters before, I was like, when Mike calls and says, hey, you want to co-host a couple of episodes? It's not for work. It's not for money. It's just because yeah, for the experience. Energy. It's the yeah, energy. Yeah, sorry, it's choice. just the good times. You know what I'm saying? Listen, man, we could joke. Listen. I came to the Apollo Theater. Uh, Is this a, how you met around, Mike? I'm, 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 I gotta I'm let it go. Like, let it go, go. I came to the shoot. Apollo Theater, um, and I was just a young kid. And I was in the streets, and I remember it was like amateur night at the Apollo or something. And when I was walking in that lobby in the Apollo, I seen him, the back of your neck was so fucking big. It was like a pit bull. <laughs> this is the first time I seen Mike Tyson in human life. And it was just your neck. And you had this big ass fucking rope chain on. And I was like, yo, it's fucking Iron Mike. I was like in awe. I couldn't believe I actually seen the champ in person. Um, I got so many stories. How I got, old were you? Was this like? Nah, we was in the street. I was like 18 yeah. or whatever, 19. I'm, I'm not. I, I'm not How much. Are you? I'm 56. I just turned 52. All so right, cool. I'm still in the same era. You know, I'm younger than him, but you I'm still young, in the you same. You out there, era. young? Yeah, you know when um in in the Bronx didn't have cable. Right, the Bronx didn't have cable. There, there was no cable in the Bronx. Like no one had it. Yeah, so you couldn't see Mike Tyson fight unless uh. you went to Queens. So the first people who had cable was in Queens. So I would go to my uncle's house in Woodside, Queens, to see all of Mike Tyson fights, and they'd be doing all dumb shit like they'd be baking shit and cooking and this. But the fight is over, like, in 10 fucking seconds. Like, everybody <laughs> getting ready for the fight. To be. This shit is over. We go grab a fucking bun. No, it's over. He's <laughs> through the ropes. Like, yo, it's a, like, we couldn't even see the fight. This shit was my, just like, he was knocking them out, you know, ASAP. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so that's, you know, that's, that's my introduction to I Am Mike Tyson. And I remember Joe, because I always was at the tunnel. I always saw at the tunnel. Oh, yeah. The tunnel. Well, you listen. know about that time you saved me and Big Pun's life. Do yeah. you remember it, Mike? Or I listen. know you're on mushrooms right now. Now, listen. <laughs> He's definitely I know I was always you're... bugging out. Yeah, I, I remember that one. I threw my shoes off. I'm probably. Can nobody I'm in high. the fucking world make this shit up? <laughs> nobody in the fucking world. It's so crazy, because right now we in Jersey, and me and, oh. me and Pun had a show in Jersey. But you know the clubs closed that too. Mm -hmm. We had a hundred guys with us. Pum was like, yo, twin, just me and you. Let's go to the tunnel. Let's go to the tunnel. Me and you. I said, fuck it, let's go to the tunnel. We go to the tunnel. And it's just me and Pun. Now Pum was really so big yeah. that Laser you know, and the tunnel that. was so violent, they make you take your boots off. Metal detectors. Pun didn't want to take his his boots mm -hmm. off because you know he's a big guy. So he started arguing with this one bouncer. And fuck you and fuck you and this and this and that. But they had like eight bounces. 
You cannot make this shit up. This is a true story. Next thing you know, it's two bounces. Like, yo, fuck them, this, this, that. So, fuck you. So, we going back at it. Me and Pond and them and them. Before you know it, it turns into like five bounces, six bounces. Now, at this point, I grabbed Pond. And Pun was a genius, but he was unrealistic and con- common sense. <laughs> he was just, he didn't have common sense. I know Otherwise, he was like a that. fucking genius, but he just didn't understand. So I grabbed him for one second. I said, you do know we're going to get fucked up. They're going to beat the shit out of us. Fuck them niggas, Joe. So I go to him, man, fuck y'all. So we talking that shit. And out of nowhere, they're about to beat us up. And you hear a voice. Hey, yo, Joe, Pun's right. Fuck these niggas. We turn around as I am Mike Tyson. He got the koofy on, the fucking suit on. He's taking off his fucking Gucci loafers and shit. We gonna fuck these niggas. I'm like, yes! yes. My poor That's kids. Like, at any moment he said, my in poor life, kids. My poor at kids. any moment in life, I'm sorry, guys. At any moment in life, you, you like, you know, you watching a game show where they say, well, you have one wish. Like, if we could have stopped life right there, we'd be like, yo, imagine we had Iron Mike right here. And the motherfuckers <laughs> show up. He wound up chasing the guy, uh, the main guy who was going to beat us up. Cock Diesel, seven four. Listen, Mike was chasing him in his socks out around the car, trying to beat the guy up. And the guy looked at me. This is the most classic moment out the whole shit. The guy looked at me. The guy was going to beat us up. He said, yo... Please tell them to stop. Tell them to stop. They, they did not want hands with Iron Mike. I was a different Tyson. person back then. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, I was a, I mean, a different person back then. I was just a different person. That's the crazy. tunnel was the best. It was just the best. I place love the to tunnel. Be. Yeah, it, oh, was, it, was, it was amazing. I tell you one There was I, no bottle service. There was no fly shit. It was like you nigga, were there. Nigga, compact nigga. You everybody. were there for the vibes, for the music, for the. Like, it just was... It was beautiful, It was though. no fluff clubs. People nah. think of clubs now. It was not that. Listen, if you ever... I went there one day and I saw the whole Wu-Tang in there. I was... I think I was there. Oh, uh, man. They went for it. I remember. Oh, they had a... Uh, yeah, uh, Wu-Tang was there a couple times. It's partying hard. Yeah. You know, uh, with the last time... Well, the only time and last time I ever met Easy e was at the tunnel. tunnel. And said so that was like two days before he died. He was in there with Ice Cube. Remember they had beef? Yeah. And it was bugged out to me because they was in the tunnel talking to each other together. And I was like, oh, shit, this hip-hop, Eazy-E and Ice Cube. And then uh, Eazy must have told him he's sick or something because they, they made up right there. And like two days later, Eazy E passed away. I mean, we got so much memories in the tunnel that... Um, and crazy shit was happening. I don't know, was it like everybody got tough in the tunnel with some shit? Uh, the energy. I, yeah, I remember energy one night energy. I watched Keith Murray. He was beefing with with uh, Prodigy and 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 uh, and <laughs> Prodigy. Be- he was beefing with Prodigy and having, but like Keith Murray was going off. Like he was trying to get it popping. And then one time I got set up, rest in peace, Big L comes up to me in the tunnel. And he's like, yo, crap. Yo, come bring your niggas, man. I got some beef, this, 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 this. So we come. Big L's our brother. Um, you know, digging in the craze. And when I come up, it's fucking Mace. He's arguing with Mace. They from the same block. I'm like, <laughs> I was hanging out with Mace the night before at Puffy's studio. Mace was looking at me like I was the greatest snake ever lived. Like, he's like, for real? Like you can't, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, off of, and then you know, L is my crew, yeah. like digging in the, So I'm sitting L there, and he's like, L is like, we will fuck you up right now. We don't give a fuck. It's whatever. <laughs> this, this, this. And I'm standing there, right, Joe? I'm like, <laughs> I don't think Mace ever trusted me again in my life after that. <laughs> that shit was foul, man. <laughs> Anybody ever put you in that position, Mike, where you was just like, they brought you, and then you was like, damn, I know them guys. No, because they brought me my whole objective is to fuck them up. Mike, it doesn't take much. It didn't take much back then. You right. know, I used to beat people up all the time. I know. And then I got like maybe 12, 13. My wife caught a lawsuit for fucking somebody up for Remy. Like, we was just lawsuit Listen. mania, and then we had to realize, oh, my God, I oh shit, that. we got money. We had to realize, yo, we got money. They know it now. So they was you're like, t- you're a mark. motherfuckers was like, Yo, mom, yo, Mike, I know you, I know you've been through this shit before. Motherfuckers be like, yo, guess what? Be like, what? I got a hundred guys with me. Everybody knows what it is. 
Oh, you're pussy. Really? I'm pussy? <laughs> Your mother's a lesbian. Uh, my mother's a lesbian? Like, this is the, I said, listen, we both bought equal, bro. You don't really want this type of shit. No, I want it, and you're pussy, and I insist, fuck you, fuck your mother, fuck you. Then we whipped the shit out of them. And the next day, I'm locked up with a lawsuit. We could squash the court I case. I could have told you about that. 50000 Like, the shit they was doing. So what do you I, do when that happens to you? Listen, when I first got really famous, you know, I wanted to. That's why I did. I went to the world. And nobody, and, but the real world, when the camera's on me, I love it. The world. Look at me. And then sometimes I'm pissed off. Maybe my girlfriend broke up with me. Maybe it's shit. I mean, it's not maybe my mother or somebody died. And this nigga in my motherfucking face. Oh, I love you. I love you. Hug and kiss you. Next thing you know, there's another motherfucker. There's another. And sometimes I start fucking them up. You know, I had to learn I that. Younger. I had to learn that because sometimes it's the guys who's over loving. Yeah. With, they just so fucking annoying. Now, yeah, but that's day, different I, than But when I got annoying. those lawsuits just like him, I, I said, I'm not, glut, I'm a glutton for pain, but I said, this shit gotta stop. Because these motherfuckers never had, uh, never had a job, this nigga get $5 million. Thank <laughs> <I laughs> God, $10 million. I gave him about the most I ever gave one person yes, was $150. Because I'm not thinking. Still a lot of money. Yeah, yeah not 150 thinking. But they, they, after the 12th one, but no disrespect. You gotta realize. I know you got hands, I know you fuck people up. But if Mike Tyson no, puts hands on you, Mike Tyson for nothing no, but that's, that's, that's what I'm no. saying. That's a different Mike check Tyson he has to write. That, yeah, but I know it was this understand. one guy that we respected. Uh, he was from Brooklyn, and he was like a gangster killer. Everybody respected him, and fucking he, something happened. He fronted on Mike. Mike knocked him out. And he sued Mike. I never respected that dude again in my life. Like, he was supposed to be a bad respect. nigga. I thought he was a yeah, bad nigga. He was supposed nigga. to be a bad nigga. Like, he was acting like that. And then I see you on the news, you knock him out, and they telling me, yo, he's suing I and Mike. I said, this nigga's pussy, man. <laughs> Well, listen, like, this is what happened. I've been in this club, and, and this nigga, I, he, had a, he had a mingle. I thought he was a good brother, so I gave him some of my weed. We told him, he said, yo, Mike, if me and you fought, because he, he beat um, Butterbean. Mm -hmm. And he said, yo, Mike, if me and you fought, I would fight more like Buster. You would come in, I would go back, and I would carry you. He's talking shit. And he, so I said, oh, excuse me, say that again, brother? Can you be kind of say it again? And he said, yeah, like I was saying, I, like Buster did. You would come, I would pull back, and I would hit you. And I said... Give me my, my joint. Give me my fucking joint back now. Give me cap. I gave him my joint. I'm talking. He said, Mike, don't get mad. It's all what it's all good, brother. And I'm high. I said, oh really? And then I was these girls were, well, anyway, he said, You with some bum bitch. <laughs> Oh, but he this wanted is a lawsuit, motherfucker, right? Yeah, yeah. But this nigga a big nigga, he's a fighter, he's a boxer too. And um I'm fucking clocking him, he's running. I grab his fucking mink coat. He runs out of his mink coat. He gets so scared. I'm fucking ripping his mink coat up. I'm fucking pulling my pants. I'm wiping my ass with the mink coat. Don't want to shit out of him. Oh, my God. I'm so fucking high drug. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. But, but you no. trying to violate him. Like, yeah, but listen. Check it's it out. Like, it's like, it's one thing to uh, fucking violate him, motherfucker, but to violate him. Like, you wanted to violate him. No, listen. I'm talking shit. I'm oh, we getting an example? Fuck you, motherfucker. Fuck all you, motherfucker. My pants are down. Fuck you, I got the meat wet. Like, yeah, motherfucker, come back over here. Next thing you know, the light is up. People looking out the window. Oh the fucking bus come by, the bus stop, everybody's looking at me. And I'm saying, fuck, I, I, they caught me. They fuck. caught me. God, they went crazy. And everybody oh. outside saw me. I mean, your iron mic, let me tell and you something. What'd you so. pay for that? Yeah, um, did I get a nigga money? I, might, I gave him some money, it wasn't no big shit. You but know, some money. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, that was their hustle. Smooth Sack Summer is slowly coming to an end, fellas. And as we enter fall, keep your boys clean and fresh for a fresh ball fall. The leaders in the Below the Belt grooming is here to make sure that you feel smooth and smell fresher than your girl's pumpkin spice. The Manscaped Perform Package at 4.0 has everything you need. Inside this package, you find their Lawn Mower 4.0 Trimmer, Weed Whacker, Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant Crop Reviver, ho-ho, toner performance, 
box of briefs, and a travel bag. This lawnmower 4.0 trimmer features a cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. The lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor and a new multi-function on and off switch that can engage a travel block and gives you the ability to turn the 4,000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shade. Did I mention this trimmer is waterproof too? Also, I'm lather with the Manscaped liquid formula to get that freshness. The crop preserver, the ball deodorant with the smoothing aloe vera formula that keeps you smelling good, keeps you smelling good. Manscaped threw in two free gifts to their performance. Package 4.0, the Manscaped boxes, and the Shed travel bag. Keep yourself groomed from head to toe with the Sheer 2.0, a luxury nail groomer kit. This kit includes stainless steel, nail cutters, tweezers, and grooming scissors for your balls. Get 20% off with free shipping with the code HOTBOXING at manscaped.com, okay? Again, that's 20% off free shipping with the code HOTBOXING at manscaped.com. I got a guy one time, though. I, I, I'm going to tell you Some something. Some of them niggas got to no, get no, fucked no. up. I got, a, I got a guy one time, right? Don't, so, get, no, no. don't get worked up, Mike. Yeah. Yo, 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 <laughs> don't yo, get Mike. worked up. No, no, no. I got, I got a guy one time, right? Let's so get they, blueberries. Listen, they sued us. They, they kept suing us, but one guy... Man, it was always these guys, man. It was just uh, another Puerto Rican dude. He fronts on me, this, this, that. I'll whip his ass so legendary, right? I go to the barber shop I always go to. This is way back in the day. And the barber's like, yo, you fucked up such and such. <laughs> yo, he's going to put you in jail and sue you. I said, yo, he was acting like he was tough. They're like, nah, man, he's going to sue you, this and this and that. I said, you know the guy? He said, yeah. So I go and turn around and I say, so I call the guy. I said, yo, man, you ain't got to lock me up. What you want? So he said, light shit. He said, I want $20,000, brown paper bag. I said, not a problem. But let's go to my lawyers, sign a paper to say you're not going to sue me. This is this. I wasn't even in on this, so I got the twenty G's. I got the bag. I showed the nigga in, in, in the in the lawyer's office. So the lawyer makes him sign the paper. The guy's dumb. He signs the paper. So the lawyer says, "Yo, Joe, we done." So I'm like, "I'm ready to give him the money." So oh no no no, he just signed it. You never did nothing to him. This this that. Fuck this motherfucker, Joe. He ain't getting no fucking money. <laughs> we did it, that motherfucker. We ain't give him no money. The lawyer did some slick shit. I ain't even know. He said, get the fuck out my office, you Ooh, piece uh, of shit. Guy walked out the office. The guy in the barbershop was like, damn, Joe, you did him dirty. I said, fuck him. Like, fuck that wow. motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, Listen, that. right? I was, in, I was, um, the judge was getting, the jury, um, the jury was in debating about me and Mitch Green, right? I'm like, fuck, fuck. You know, I, I knew Mitch Green. Really? Oh, he's a, he's a interesting no, no, character. No, I knew, I literally knew Mitch Green, right? My uncle owned a bodega on 132nd and Park Avenue. Did he rob it? Listen to me, no, but he would come every day and buy a 40 ounce. <laughs> he would come in every day. He had a bike, right? He'd be yeah, on a regular a bike. 10 speed. 10 speed, and he come, he got the Jerry Curls looking like Easy E. And he would come by 40 ounce every day. And we'd be like this, and then people be like, he's a boxer. Then he started telling me I'm gonna fight Mike Tyson. This guy was such a fucking bum. Like, you, we were like, Mike Tyson? Yeah, I'm gonna fight Mike Tyson, this and that. This guy was a fucking bum. Right? I gotta and tell then, you more. No, and then I, I heard this, but Mitch fucking green, huh? Yeah, but listen. Mitch was fucking, I'm in Dapper Dad, I'm fucking high and drunk. Oh, I know. Because I, I paid for them clothes earlier, so I came back around 3 in the morning. So I'm in there with people, we laughing and laughing. And then people stop laughing, and I'm still talking. I'm like, what the fuck's up? I turned this nigga Mitch Green's in here. Jesus. I'm his mind. his neighborhood. I'm, no, listen, I had no idea. So um, I'm chilling now. He said, man, what the fuck you doing out here? Excuse me, Ooh, you know, what the talking. fuck you doing out here, nigga? I said, you still, because I'm, I'm ridiculous. I said, you still jealous because you lost? What motherfucker? I never lost. You can't beat me. I said, I did. Look at the record book. You know? <laughs> and so he was talking shit. 
And when we were leaving, he grabbed from my pocket and he said, Mow. He went down. So I got in my car. I didn't think he was going to get up. So I went in the car. And next thing you know, he popped up like fucking um, Jason. He said, I'll call boom. And then he said, boom, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and he was on like real drugs. Oh, huh? definitely. He got up. I'm in the car. And I'm telling the nigga, man, let's go. So I'm tired hitting the nigga. I'm like 300 pounds. And so I hear him in class and let's go. Next thing you know, Mitch Green jumps in the fucking I'm thinking because it's a convertible. I'm thinking the nigga's going to come to the top. I'm like, fuck. But the nigga fell. And then when he fell, he broke off the side mirror. You know, I had a Rolls Royce back then. I'm saying, this car is 150, 200. This shit must be 25, 30,000. Yeah. yeah. I said, fuck. Yeah, I'm the mirror's 20,000. So I'm going to fuck Mitch up. <laughs> I went outside. You got mad again. I, you got mad all over. We were fighting and wrestling, but I got a good shot. We were fighting that. And then when he went down, I said, boom, right now, bah, it was out cold. Boom. It's out cold. And his head hit the ground. Boom. I said, oh, you shit. You might have killed this man. And I started sneaking out. I saw the cops. I got in the car and we just left. Yes. Yo, but let me let me. Then the next morning I said the nigga with like, the fuck Mike Tyson. I'm suing Mike Tyson. Fucking fairy, yeah, he did this, he kicked my ass. But you was trying to leave and he came, he still wanted it after the that. The guy was a bum. I know my Mitch Green. I'm trying to tell you, I fucking know Mitch Green. Like I know him myself. He would come in the bodega every day and buy a 40 ounce. He was a boxer. He'd come on a fucking regular 10 speed. I was gonna bite that motherfucker, but oh, I this nigga was nasty nigga. I was gonna fucking ooh, you motherfucker. Oh my god. Yo, I might let me That's ask you a question, Mike. right? Yeah. Because <laughs> That's the old man. Shit. Obviously, <laughs> your wife, your family's here, they got you under surveillance. Like they got you <laughs> pretty uh relaxed. Um, but we're very similar, but you weigh more than me because you have no, no in life, you have never had a problem spending money, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's safe to say you didn't respect money or you just thought it was coming again? No, I just know um, my perception of money. You don't care about it. My whole perspective of what it's used for and everything. But break that down for me, Mike, because... You know, I know you, Scott Storch, I'm a problem. We got a couple of people that just don't mind spending money. I want to know what, what, so what's your perception of money? That's, because um, money is, um, for sense of security. The more money you got, the less you think you can die. You don't think someone can kill you. You don't think you could die from a, a driving accident. Mm. You know, it, it makes you feel like you're God. You have a lot of money. And I tell you, if, if um, you think a lot of money is going to make you happy, you never have a lot of money. Mm. And, and you break afraid. that down because everybody's looking to you for money. I'll tell you a crazy story happened to me. I called Von Zip, rest in peace, and I said, I need Iron Mike. I was calling Mike because I want to shoot the video to y'all want to live my lifestyle. So if I shot that video, I had to have Iron Mike just, I never shot the video because because you wasn't available. So I never forget in my life, I was going through Central Park. Zip gave me your number. I called you and I was like, yo, Mike. You was like, yo, what's up, Joe? And I said, yo, what's up, Mike? I be, yo, I've been looking for you. Like, yo, Joe, you all right? You okay? You want me to send you a million dollars, Joe? Oh, yeah, I remember. You told I remember. me this shit. <gasps> I had a random phone call. Like, I, I was calling you to just say, could you be in my video? You never said that to me, Mike. No, no, no. I swear to God. You <laughs> never said that to me. I swear to God, I am, Mike, so generous, right? I learned something no. that day when I hung up. And I, I said, Mike, I, I don't want no money. Else. I got to talk to you about something else. I said, Mike, I don't want no money. Why did you think he needed a million dollars? Really, why you talk to me about what, what you going to talk somebody about? Somebody told me he was fucked up. That's uh. crazy. And he fucked up. He they took everything and... And what else? What's that when they kick you out and they take the house and they put all your... No, oh, that's a lie. Up. This is it. No, yeah. man. I call you up. I'm like, yo, Mike, I want you to be in the video. But the He's fact like, yo, that... Joe, you want a million... No. Listen, but the fact so that, that shit, he... That was the greatest offer that's I ever made in my life. That's not that he thinks like that. Like, well, I'm oh, telling him I'm good. Story. I'm going to tell you another... Come on, Joe. We got to tell this story. And it's an old story, so nobody should get mad. All right? Yeah, but... So listen, yeah. then they come to my house, right? I'm in Vegas, right? Yo, so they come in my house... Right. I come you out. You want the real story, please? Oh, yeah. Because your wife's here. No, my wife is my wife is my partner. You sure? She but she wasn't with you at the time. Oh, she knows who I am. So he tells me. <laughs> 
<laughs> you sure you want the real story? Oh, she, or she should I let it. you tell the story? No, maybe please, the kids should cover their ears. Nah, no. Go ahead, I, Joe, please. This was one I never told this please. one, so we could talk about yes, this? Yes, please. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. If so Kiki Mike, says, you know. Mike invites me to the house, and he says, bring Remy Ma with you. This is around Lean Back or some shit like that. We go to the house. He opens the door butt naked, right? <laughs> so I'm Why? like, yo, Mike, you want the Why, story Mike? or not? Yo, Mike opens the door, ass naked. I'm like, yo, Mike, what the fuck is up, bro? <laughs> so he closed the door. He comes back with a towel. He says, nah, this is just boxing shit. You know, boxing shit, we comfortable with this. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? I'm like, yo, Mike, could you put on some fucking clothes on him, Mike? Like, yo, this guy's crazy, right? So I go, you want the real story? Tell him, you man. You sure? Please. <laughs> You sure? He can edit right? it. So we go. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm only worried about yeah, her. No, no. He takes me a tour to the house. I'm not lying to you. Every room I walked in, there was a, a, a chick in every room. <laughs> in every fucking room. Jacuzzi, this. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? I am Mike. This guy lives a fucking life. <laughs> And um, and so we sit down with him. We have dinner. We had the best time of our life. We was there. How you want to finish the story, Mike? Continue. You want me to finish the story? Will you please. He said. I don't five know if it's times. right. I believe him. Well, he his wanted... wife knows who he is. He... <laughs> All right, listen. Um, I said, Joe, just leave the mind. And she was upstairs. I was blocking her. She said, No, no, can't tell of it. He wanted to. He wanted to keep Remy Ma. Right. <laughs> you can't. It and he someone? made offers like he showed us some convertible Benz new shit. He was like, you can keep this. All you got to do is spend one night. She looked at me like, Joe, if you don't get me the fuck out this house, Joe. <laughs> I was like, Mike, Mike, we can't do that. We can't. Mike, Mike's my sister. He said, well, come on, Joe. I was like, you can't do this. He offered us some fucking 500 Benz this. I was like, oh, my <laughs> God. And, hey, yo, that was a great time, Mike. I had a wonderful time with you. <laughs> Had a wonderful time. I am Mike. And this is before um, Remy and me were both not married at the time. Yeah. Yeah, I am Mike wasn't you had a married. Crush she already. wasn't married. It's okay. I used to love busting her chops. <laughs> I used to love busting her chops. Yo, I am Mike Tyson is. Uh, Anyway, uh, no, 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 no. We want to know about your one man show. That's gonna be pretty gutsy, man. Oh. Going. Did you ever see um, his? Did you have you yeah, seen Mike's? I did, but I gotta see it again. It's so. It was so no, no, good. No, no, of course, it's the best. Um, one man show. Um, Dave Chappelle gonna uh, introduce me. You know, we got him to do that, and I'ma just go in there and just tell. Look a at bunch those people's stories. eyes. Look at them in the eyes. That's what, and you know what they want. You know, it's some subliminal. As soon as you look in their eyes, they tell you what you want. What they want they you tell to you. say. Yeah, you can. Feel and so they know you're coming there because when you did it, you did it. You knew some shit to be funny, and you knew some shit. I didn't to be know real. nothing. I didn't know nothing because I thought we were gonna make it like a, a a hard guy that came from nothing and made something of himself. And when I got up there, started talking, they started laughing. I mean, really ripping it. Yeah. And so I went back to my wife and said, baby, this is not going well, is it? She said, just keep doing it. And so instead of a tough magic. guy story turning into a comedy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, wow. because I'm not going for a comedy. But I've seen people, because we got Dave Chappelle introducing me, so people thought it was a comedy. I'm going for real life stories. If it's funny no, to you. No, listen, no. That's the funny shit. Yeah. That's, a, that's what this when I said I didn't have a father, I don't know who my father is. They started fucking laughing. <laughs> that's not funny. What? That's some shit, man. I don't know who my father is. They just ripped. I said, oh, oh we fucked. Shit, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you dumb. I felt like they were saying, you dumb motherfucker. You don't know your family because they're all white people. Yeah. And I went back there. My wife said, keep on, keep on. And well, just, wasn't you gotta it scripted? know it's the, wasn't, yeah. it, wasn't, it, wasn't it scripted? We though? had to remember all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Kiki, now, you Kiki, remember, it's Kiki probably like it, right? a bulletin yes. point. Did you yes, know that? And then you go, on, huh? That Kiki wrote that one man, that... that yes, I saw Chad commentary do his show mm -hmm. his wife. on Broadway. Uh -huh. I said, baby, I can do something like that. I can go up there and talk to people. I, they just won't ask, ask questions. I used to go up there and talk to people. They would have to ask questions. I just do it like that. I just won't answer questions. I just talk to the people. I ain't gonna people. lie to you, Mike. I can't wait. Oh, I know it's gonna nah, be so yo, fucking You know fun. I'm hype. I'm ready to go. Nah, you born to do that. I know how I'm gonna do this to do thing. It's gonna be crazy. First second, I'm gonna grab their heart and pull them out. They, I got them. First second. You gotta when? give them a roller coaster, crying, happy, November. moody. Mm. You know, it's all about a roller coaster of life. And so that was. A, I think that was a great because you would think about I am Mike Tyson or just anybody in general, right? They have so much success, like you started out young. 
then they disappear, right? And they don't have this type of shit that you got, this love affair with people, how much people love you. It don't go. And you keep working and, 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 and doing new things and going to another level, whether it's the cannabis, whether it's this, whether it's that. People don't, they don't do that. Right? And so did, did you ever think when you retired you would be even more famous at this point right now? No, but my wife did. <laughs> my wife did. I don't know what I mean. I was over there. I'm, I'm OD on cocaine, and she's explaining this is what we're going to do. Never once thinking I'm going to have a heart attack or die or anything. She's saying, we're going to do this. Wipe my hair with ice and everything. We're going to do this. We're going to produce our shows. Then we're going to do this. And don't worry. Everything's going to be okay, and I love you. And um, I feel, How yeah, sweet, I'm, saying, I'm saying, yeah, right. And look at us now. Yeah, that's that a lot. Fa- of- does that amaze you that that all of that stuff that she well, saw? Well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a believer now. Mm. I'm a believer. It takes wow. a strong person to be able to fight that fight, you know, because drugs is so addictive. It's crazy because my book comes out in November, and I'm going over the chapters that I wrote, and one of them is based on my brother's addiction to drugs, and how just so much shit, man. Uh, this book is crazy. You know, I was 12 years old. My brother started smoking angel dust. Jesus. Nobody in my family had done drugs. I've done that before. So we didn't know. <laughs> so Pretty we... much anything that you're going to say in your book, he's going to go, yeah, yeah I, I did, did that. that before. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> As, long story short is uh, my mom started suffering, and I borrowed my friend's brother's 22. I was only 12 years old. And I went up to Boston Road where they were selling my brother yeah, the Angel Road. Dust, and I threw everybody on the ground and was crying and telling them, if you sell my brother drugs again, I'm killing you. I'm killing you. You're 12? It's 12 years old. Wow. I'm going to kill one of you motherfuckers. But from that moment on, they told, they used to call me Little Angel. From that moment on, they told my brother, he's not Little Angel no more. Like, we will kill this little nigga. He come around here. Again, these was grown men. But they ain't under, and, and so when, you know, so the drugs is so addictive, you know, it becomes... And so for years, I never used drugs. Fat Joe sold plenty of drugs, did whatever, but I never used drugs. And I looked at people who use drugs as being weak or selfish. Like, you being selfish, you don't care how we feel. Because, you know, I used to cry to my brother every day, take him to drug programs, this and this and that, till I finally realized, like, sometimes the shit just too too addictive to where the smartest, the greatest person, oh, the God. greatest, they yeah. can't just, they, they can't, you, maybe they want to, but they can't. No, so, I don't believe, I'm not a believer of that. I believe anybody, um, they, they, um, they manifest their um, destiny. I don't believe, I believe a guy, I don't believe they're weak or anything. I believe they're pretty selfish. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they want to stay in that perpetual mood of, of, of slavery is mm. perpetual. They fall in love with the nothingness of it. They get that first hit, and then they may get it for a couple of weeks, maybe still a month or two. Then one day you can't get the hit no more. What but do you what do? What is the thing that separates you from one person having that experience and can't ever not quit it? Some people, su- you survived mm. that. I but mean, listen, it-, it has a lot to do with my ego. What do you mean? I don't know. Um, I might be, I just might splurge and food gorge or something and I might look at myself in the mirror and say I'm beautiful and then I start working out. And just stop doing drugs? Huh? Yeah, everything. But my ego only because I wasn't receiving what I, I wanted out of life from from the drugs. Mm. You know, I didn't do it by myself. You know, my family was all involved in helping me. But it wasn't an easy... Um, wasn't an easy ride, pretty bumpy. It's hard. You know, my mother lived on the window waiting for my brother to get home Ooh. for fucking 20 years. That's tough. So imagine your kid is on drugs and your mom's is on the window and waiting for him every night and this and that. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a real traumatic experience. Like, you know, I might be spoiling it, but I remember one day, one night we was in... Uh, we was going to Yankee Stadium. We grew up like 10 blocks away and we was all, and, and you know, when you're in the projects, they do not give a fuck. Like we used to snap on each other at six in the morning. Like we were harsh. Like, you know, you talk about your mother, your father, we didn't care. So one day I'm walking to Yankee Stadium with 
um, my crew, and out of nowhere, we see this dude in the middle of a fucking stairs holding on to a pole. He wouldn't let go of the pole. When I walked up, it was my brother. Mm. And they were killing me. Look at Angel, this nigga's a dust head. Yo, look at this motherfucker. See, I never had friends like that. Not Even that in the gutty browns. I never oh, had no, friends like that. Oh, no, they broke my heart. These are my friends. So I wound up not going to Yankee game, bringing my brother back. I only got those friends when I got famous, but not when I was younger. Mm, thank God. Mm. Mm, we, you know, I went through a lot because now I got this reputation of being tough and, and we terror squad and my brother's motherfuckers is calling me talking about, yo, they just robbed your brother. We go over there and do terrible things to the whole block because you hear, yo, they stuck up your brother over here and we, we are fucking not playing out how did here. You, how did you handle that situation with your brother? I don't really want to tell you. All right, so listen. Like, we tore that shit up. Like, but did you realize, um, from addiction, all I've seen, you have to let him hit rock bottom. Well, when my brother, my brother went blind using drugs. Wow. I am Mike. Yeah. And so, um, and that's so crazy. As he's well blind. as I know you, I, I didn't know that. You didn't know that? It's in the book. <laughs> book of Jose. Let me, yo, but it's real talk. It's so crazy. This is my that, hero. You know, I've this known Joe brother. since he's, I've known Joe since Flo we Joe. We was Too young, super young. You never knew this about his brother. And, this, and I thought I know everything about Joe. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. My brother went blind using drugs. So what's crazy is, uh, I'll tell y'all the story is, uh, I, I, so I go through these tax problems. They put me in jail. I come out. Me and Remy put out all the way up, the shit is number one. I sit in the car, it's a sunny day. Me, even though I've never been in the gang, the the NYPD got me like gang member number one. Surveillance. It, beyond. Yeah. Like they got me gang, I possibly to this day. Like he is the gang leader, right? Even though I've never been in the gang in my life. So they never let me perform in the South Bronx in my neighborhood. They never let me perform because they thought all the bad people were gonna come. Mm -hmm. So finally, all the way all the way up is number one and they let me perform in Cortona uh, Park where I'm from. This is where I'm born and raised. My father used to sell beat hours in the summer. Like this is our hood. They let me, right? So my song's number one. We making money again. We back, you know, we, we starting to feel like we back. And so my mother calls me and says, yo, you should see your brother. He's in Columbia Presbyterian. And so I'm like, I'm like, what's wrong with him? And she was like, no, you know, they say he's blind. I said, come on, ma. You know, my family, mm. you know, Fat Joe exaggerate. My mother exaggerates more. So I'm like, yo, ma, you bugging <laughs> out. So I walk in the hospital. Mind you, I got to go do this concert, right? I'm expecting 500 people at the concert, 1,000 people. It's in a park. It's just a park, right? So when I walk in the room, I'm like, my brother's half his size. You know what I'm saying? So he's dumb skinny. And I'm like, yo, June. And he turns around, Joey. And he's when he's looking around the room, yo, bro, I just start crying like a fucking faucet got turned on. I couldn't believe my brother was blind. I'm like, yo, June, like, what's up, man? And he was like, nah, Joey, you know, this, this, that, I'm blind. I said, well, that shit, probably the most painful moment of my life. And so I stood there with him. I said, yo, June, man, come to Miami, man. We'll fucking feed you all day. You won't need nothing. Leave the Bronx. Come with me to Miami. You know, you won't have to do nothing again. You retired. We're going to cook for you. We're going to clean for you. We're going to this. And this is where I learned the rock bottom lesson that you tell him. And my brother turned to me and said, nah, Joe, I'm going to press my luck in the Bronx. I said, oh. So to me, I'm like, this guy went blind and he still want to be in the street with the shit? I said, what the fuck? So I left there feeling like shit. This is where I say, let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. Mm -hmm. Your darkest moments to bring you your most clarity, right? So I leave there, I'm destroyed. I get in the car going towards Cortona Park and they playing all the way up and this, that. When I get to the park, there's 20,000 people out there, I am like 20,000 people. We expected 500 people. When I mean everybody's mother, the hot dog man, the everybody I ever met in my life was in this fucking crowd. Because this is my neighborhood. You know, this is where my, my projects, my grandmother's, everything was there. 
And it was so surreal because it was the worst moment of my life, but yet and still God showed me that here's a beautiful moment for you, man. 20,000 people came out from your hood. You know, you, for your hood to come out somewhere is impossible. Them motherfuckers came out 20,000 people. You know, they don't give a fuck they about nobody. They don't give a fuck about nobody. Fame and No, they don't give a fuck. Nah, they don't give a fuck about nobody. They don't give a fuck. And so it was like such a uh, defining moment in my life. But after that, my brother, you know, he's sober. He don't use drugs no more, but he's blind. But why he, did it have to be after that? that? Why yeah. it had to be that? Because it was meant to be. Mike, I, that was the manifestation you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Listen, but he thinks I, our lives are all designed. Yeah, We've I, talked about this. Believe, it is, though. I believe when I was a young boy, right, and I thought <clears throat> I was a wimp. People used to rob me and to beat me up. But I used to always think I was Jim Brown, a bad mother. I used to say, three the hard way. I used to see that song <laughs> and shit. And I used to think that stuff. But I, I seen this when I was in Sparford locked up. I saw Muhammad Ali. And I said, whoa, I want to be like him. And I felt the energy. I said, what's going to happen? Wow. Yeah. I didn't know nothing about fighting this. Watch, um, but then I watched but Roberta. you felt it. I, I watched Roberta Duran fight Sugar Ray Lynn, and I said, whoa, this is what I want to do. Yeah. So, Muhammad Ali, did you get to meet him like... Oh, he was a good friend of mine. Without the Parkinson's? You met him before yes. he caught yes. that? Yes, yes, Oh, so I, you met wow. Muhammad Ali, Muhammad yeah. Ali. But listen, but I, can I explain something? He um he aged early, you know. I remember yeah. I remember seeing him shake. Just not like anybody. Just yeah, a little. He, he just aged early, late in life. I mean, early in life. Yeah, do you think a lot you of know. boxers do that? Listen, um, there's been boxers that died. They got hit like this. And then there's guys you could beat them all night, and then they retire. They don't have no dementia. They have nothing. They're living a very healthy life and stuff. You know, the hands might hurt, the rib might hurt. It looks so good. You, you would never think this was a fighter. He's articulate. It's just, it's like the luck of the draw. I just saw Ric Flair. Yeah. Oh, he was, he's he's talking, talking shit. Motherfucker looking amazing. Talking he had an shit. alligator blazer on his talking chain. Talking shit. Checking in the thing. I was like, yo, Ric Flair, me, I know him. Man. Yo, fat yo, what's up, my brother? I was like, damn, Ric Flair got to be 70-something, 70 70 right? Wow. Looking amazing. God bless. Talking great. Yeah. Walking Beautiful. around great. Like, I was like, damn, Ric Flair, man. He like, you know, it's the same thing. I went to see a friend of mine in the hospital just yesterday, as soon as I got back. A uh, friend of mine, like one of my brothers, he's in the hospital. Then I seen another brother I grew up with in the projects. I never knew he was a doctor. So he ran up on me. He was like, I'm fucking proud of you. I'm so proud of you. He was for me in the pro. I was like, yo, you a doctor? He was like, yeah, I've been, I've been working here for 20 years. I'm like, yo, I'm fucking proud of you. Like, you know, where we come from, it's not too many success stories. So whenever we see anybody Nobody goes to college good, from where we come from. You know what I'm saying? Anybody doing good, you feel like, wow. Like, you know, I've watched people. I get, I'm not even going to lie to you. I've been to supermarkets where I see somebody I grew up with they're most likely supposed to be dead or in jail. And the guy's working in a supermarket. I'm like, yo, I'm proud of you, bro, man. You some guy, listen, some guy that I used to rob with, next thing you know, they're certain people's managers. You know, when you see anybody that made it, it don't even have to be no big shit. You know what I'm saying? And and so people, I don't think people don't understand how fucking poor it you, is I where I come from. I was just telling somebody that. It's so fucking poor. It's so much depression. It's so much... Uh, trauma. You know, trauma, that you, nobody really makes it. And when I see somebody make it in the smallest level, you know what I'm saying? It makes me happy to feel like, damn, we ain't the only ones that come up out this shit. I feel the same way. When I see a person I know, I see he's working with somebody, and I said, wow. Well, you told me Fendi, you raised Fendi. Yeah, I knew from him. From your building. Little, I think I knew him before. I knew him when his mother had him in his belly, I think. <laughs> That's Fendi. crazy. Fabulous yeah. Fendi. Yeah. yeah. Knew his mother, Brenda, no more. She knows my mother. She knows my family. We're, we're almost like cousins. We've been, we knew each other so long. Wow. He, I, don't, I don't think besides his blood family, he don't know nobody as long as he knew me. That's no more and vice versa. That's nuts. Because wow. you told me that one time and I seen him and I was like, yeah. Fendi, Mike told me this and this and that. And he was like, yo, I know. I get no, I'm, Mike I know, on the phone now. I, know, yo, I, yeah. know, I think I know him before he was born or, or when he was just born. Wow. That's crazy. That's, That's a crazy. long time. Yeah, like, yeah, I, so see, look, I see, look, oh, yeah. 
And he listen. He has a good. He's a good guy. He's just a good guy. He's a businessman. He, he, oh, man. He's just. He still his. You know, his family is still this. He has a really hard family, and he's just. He's just a good guy. Good. He 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 um, represents his family really well. Mm-hmm. Really good man. I'm really proud of him. It's interesting when you can see somebody what they come from, what their start was, and watch the whole thing happen. You have, like, a different respect. And like, yeah, it don't uh, even make no sense. Yeah. I'll tell you, I seen a homeboy in the hospital yesterday, and all he said to me was like, yo, I'm proud. I'm just so proud, Joey. I'm proud of you. I'm Aww. proud of you. Proud Because we really come from nothing. You know what I'm saying? And then we, we, that's we've been why living good. That's, so why we, that's, that's why we... That goes back to what you were saying, how you spend money. And I think, I know, knowing it's you a, and knowing how you live your life, like, Joey's not afraid to spend money. He likes to take care of his family. He likes to live life. He likes to, when he has a birthday party, have you ever been to one of his birthday parties? Never, but you know, I understand <laughs> he, why you spend that money. When I was, I was so insecure. Yeah. You know what I mean? I knew people always would be around me if they knew I have, you know, if they see me because they know I have money. So I bought a lot of things, mostly out of insecurity now. Mm-hmm. You know, I, don't I, think that's, I just like the good life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We came from nothing. I don't, you know, it wasn't the good life is in perspective. You know, good life is is you can live the party life, the expensive life, but I don't know. I don't know what the good life is. You know, for me, it's like uh, I like to celebrate. Every oh, I like to celebrate. I, I do up. too. And the shit. Right at this point, right now, being 52, I ain't gonna lie to you. When I wake up, I look, and if the sun is out, I'm like, thank God, I got another one. So I'm Listen, able to do also, some shit. My wife hates when I used to go out and stuff. She said, "Look at you, you're too fucking old. Do you think somebody <laughs> looking at your old ass?" And I, um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Teach that the same shit. How beautiful your wife is. No, listen. But look at him. He got one. Listen, you know right? that's how I'm Mike Tyson. Yo, that's only one I'm Mike Tyson. Don't let nobody come down. Hold on, listen. Tyson or not, oh, you can't listen. be the old guy in the club even if you're Mike Tyson. Listen, don't believe that. I don't believe you that. You can. No, Why they, don't we make old guy clubs? That no. Fuck no. it. 50 and over it's fly called, niggas. It's called birthday parties and restaurants yeah, with yeah, music. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, called yeah, that. Yeah, 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 you yeah, can't yeah. be at the club with 20-year-olds and you 50-something in, in the club with a with a bottle at the table with sparklers. You, you can't know, have sparklers in your no, 50s. No, no, it's beautiful. <laughs> you be a miserable motherfucker. Don't let them make you miserable. If you like going out, go out. Yeah, 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 oh, I got yeah, thrown. Yeah, yeah. Kiki, I got thrown in the we make them miserable. No, you gotta, <laughs> no, no, but you know we have what one we do. life. You have one life. You got no, one yeah, life. You do. One life. You know, some people. Because I believe in that. You know what I'm saying? It's always my motto. We only get one life, and we got to make the best of it. You know what I'm saying? But some take some people take that shit literally and do the most. You know what I mean? Like a motherfucker just do crazy shit, all type of well, shit. Well, that's reckless. People who would be reckless. No, reckless. Yeah, yeah. Considered, considered very reckless. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, and so I've seen some people take that literal where I'm like, yo, these motherfuckers is wild. But... And so they take that one life to a, to another level. Like they're gonna do whatever they're gonna do, what they want to do. Mike, um, you didn't smoke this whole. I guess whole I had interview? fun in my life. He's fucking with Joe Crack, huh? man. Oh, I'm smoking that. No, I'm like cl- smoke. I still have a contact drunk. high from the last keep him interview. Drunk yeah, free. he has me mesmerized. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you don't smoke, Mike Tyson you don't smoke no shit, do you? I don't smoke shit. That's fucked up. You know what he happened? He keeps trying to get me to do mushrooms. Nah, you know <laughs> the one time I smoked weed, I had this girl convince me and tell me that the sex was gonna be amazing, mm-hmm. that we're gonna this and that. Well, so I, mean, I smoked weed. I gotta hear this shit. I run out the house butt naked, scared to death. I got paranoid. Yeah, it does that They too. call that shit a bad trip. I, Fat Joe, run... I was Fat Joe, too. <laughs> run out the house butt naked. The girl jumps in my uh, Lexus, and um, I'll tell you later who the girl was, right? <laughs> so I jump in my... Le- she jumps in my Lexus. She's like, Joe, I was like, no, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And so she convinced me she was going to take me to the hospital, and she turned around and drove around the block, brought me in the apartment. I took like eight showers. I never smoked again. And so every night of my life, I watch these motherfuckers in the studio. They got bowls. The I weed don't fuck looks so beautiful, studio, you know. so amazing. I won't touch the shit because I don't think nobody want to see Fat Joe butt naked 2022. That was the only time. You, uh, plus, you have that the was thing, the only plus time. you have the fear of like drugs and that whole thing. It's probably a combination yeah. of that. No, I got pat. But you don't. Bro, how do you relax? Bro. Do you ever relax? Yeah, I relax. No, but I, watch I mean, a movie, really, I like, listen to music. You know, I, did, I listen you know, to music too. Yeah. You know, I drink twice a year. 
It's on my birthday and then on New Year's. And what they telling me is, Dre told me the other, we I just did my birthday party I last year. I was, was sauce money. <laughs> you were. Listen, Dre told me, yo, had I known that you were that fucking funny drunk, I would have had you drunk in the studio <laughs> all the fucking time making your music. He said, yo, nigga, you crazy when you drunk. I said, yo, I just, when I, and that's the problem, Mike. When I do drink, I have the best time in the world. That's why I don't want to do it. You understand? I don't want to oh. overdrink. I don't want to get high. I might enjoy this shit. You know? I don't think you will. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, it's not made for. You don't want to do it. Nah, if you I can't do, do it. You like do. That. You still want to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be bugging out. Everything like, ain't for everybody. No, no way. Yeah. No. You ever go to the airport? I be in the airplane six in the morning. They be ordering all type of Jack Daniel, Bloody Mary. Oh, they I'm can't like, take it from people. Yo, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with this? They can't take it. <laughs> 5.35 in the morning. Isn't that something? No, that shit is crazy, bro. It, I'm kills more, it kills more people than all the drugs combined. Mm -hmm. Liquor? Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that, but they getting drunk 5.30 in the morning. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with these people? Like, that's the type of shit And they kill people. And they kill people. On drinking. And drinking. Alcohol. Yeah, they kill people. Drinking and driving. Ooh, oh, wipe, yeah. wiping people out. Yeah, yeah, I've seen shit like that uh, occur. Um, I've seen shit like that uh, uh, occur where, you know, school teachers drunk, kill somebody, go to jail five, ten years. Like, one thing that's guaranteed is you could go to jail every day. No doubt. You could go to jail. Uh, Punch a cop ever. in his face, you in jail. Right, right. It's not you, hard. You might get drunk, kill a motherfucker driving, you in jail. Like, I mean, that's one thing guaranteed that you could do every day is go to jail. If you want to go to jail, you can go to jail. Why would you want to go to jail? I don't want to go to jail. Well, listen. I'm telling you. Going to jail. Is a fact. You're right. I don't want to go to jail either, nigga. <laughs> we don't want to go to jail. You either? We, ever. We don't ever want to go to jail not again. Not only do I not want to go to jail, I don't even want to visit. It's not even fun to visit people in jail. Well, they make it they make it hard on you to visit. This is all a, a psychological thing. So first of all, they'd rather you be in jail with nobody. I mean, I, I think it's better for his episode, but they make it so that people don't visit you. They don't want them to visit you. So when my wife used to come visit me, they'd be like, yo, change your clothes. You looking too set. Like, they don't want people to visit you. Don't know why, but they don't. You know what I'm saying? They humiliate and, 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 you. And, and when you go there. to jail, you been you could be a fucking preacher, mm. right? And you go to jail, they treat you like the inmate. You know, they want to give you this experience when you come, like, don't come back. Oh, yeah, right. I love don't my three years in prison. Don't come visit nobody again. I had a ball. What? I thought I loved my three years in prison. I, have, I had the ball. You did? Oh, man. But did fuck. you have to get to that point with it? Or? Well, the first year I had, you know, I'm fighting with motherfuckers that guard they fighting you? Huh? They fighting. They lined like, niggas up. Niggas was fighting you. Uh, no, niggas sleeping. I was knocking. No, no, I, I was I'm crushing like, guards. Somebody said, "Yo, beat me at the yard, one on one." My Iron Mike. Somebody said that. No, because niggas said, ain't crazy. If, if, he, if he said that, yeah, somebody would kill him. Here, nigga, Listen, I go, to, I go to prison. With a goofy on, nah, let's go to the yard. Forget that, Joe. I go to prison. Next thing you know, I'm in the, I'm in all the gangs. Next thing you know, the fucking white guys are checking people for me. And I, listen, I didn't know that until the year when I got a year and say, hey, this is cool. I had, I had someone give me the, the menu. What do you want to eat today? You know, I said, yeah, let's get some Chinese food. Yeah, let's get some Big Macs. Let's do this today. Let's get some fried chicken. Let's do this today. We were fucking living the life oh, of Raleigh. Oh, yeah, I was doing it. Yeah, and... Um, That's not the normal chef. jail experience. I had, I had a, I no, had no, it's a, not. You know what it is. I had a girlfriend in prison that was helping me pass the test to shorten my time. She got pregnant. In jail? In prison, yeah. And then she um, she no longer had the baby. She didn't have the baby. Um, but, um, yeah, I had a ball three years. <laughs> And hey, listen, no, it's, so check this you out. You would never want to go no, back. Never in life. No. But listen, if I could live the life I had before, I will. But listen, I, everybody came to visit me. Who gets named somebody? Whitney Houston, Bobby Brown. If everybody came. Salt and Pepper, who else came? Tupac. Tupac came. Um, Madonna. Martin Luther King and all his <laughs> Martin Luther King kids came. Betty Shabazz came. I, listen, I, I... Wow. MC Hammer came. Um... Michael Jackson, mother and father, came and looked out for me. Wow. Betty Shabazz, um, and just a lot of people came. 
You know, now people love you and you and you yeah. and you symbolize so much. You know what I'm saying to to us. You know what I'm saying your success story for us. That's why I keep people keep raising you up. There's people like this shit ain't like you. This shit ain't normal, Mike. People love you, and they love your story, and they know all the injustices you went through. They know. Uh, technically, you, you you ain't go to Harvard. You ain't this. And motherfucker want to fuck with you and be like, yo, man, we got to take care of that. We got to... You ever seen that shit on Instagram? They be like, protect, protect them at all yeah. costs. That's how we feel about I am Mike Tyson. Protect them at all costs. Like this motherfucker, he's us. You know, um... That's how I felt. I cried. I told you this before. I cried. And it's sad. I cried when, when Mike lost to... Evander Holyfield. I fucking cried. Like, I got up. I was with a bunch of niggas. <laughs> I got up and walked to the back and started crying. Because, not that only happened. because we love him. He's a positive black man as well. But you represented so much to us that, you know, we just... I was just de devastated because I was just like, you know, I just see a reflection of Mike and, and me and us. Of course. Know what you learn from me, if anything, you learn adversity. Adversity makes the weak weak and the strong strong. I never, um, my head was bloody, but it was never bowed. I keep fighting. Mm. You know? Ooh. I just not gonna, I'm not far. gonna do that. I'm never gonna give up. My head that's just not who I am. That's just my not who I am. My head was bloody, but I never bowed. Never, ever. No, that's a fact. You don't bow. I'm the, I never bow, too. I'll tell you the truth. You got to kill me. I mean, I'm, I know you don't like me talking like that, I but you're not, yeah, I'm not bowing out to nobody ever yeah. in history. You know, being killed physically happen. is not as bad as getting killed psychologically. Mm, that's a fact, though. No, really. No, no, it's a fact. Because you I die, you die one time. You, you fucking die a billion times if you're a fucking smuck. If you're not a good person. Yeah. Yeah. Clinging to life. Never expecting to die. Do you believe that people think that? That they don't that expect they don't to die. They, don't, they, don't expect, they believe they're really special. Well, I don't think they be, they don't want to uh, think about um, dying. Hey, what you was those people named? Hey, what was those people that you that killed themselves? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jim the, Jones. Yeah, him, but what's his name? These guys are recent guy. The guy with the blonde hair and had the eyes Dave open. Koresh. We're getting yeah. no, no, not another. We're getting ready to wait for the mothership. Come on, you know these people. I know it's gonna drive. They me all died now. in that place in California. That, 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 um, it wasn't that. Recent I thought it was ago. David Koresh. Oh, I thought that no. was all. Uh, that's that. That's these guys were in a certain what group. Heaven's, Heaven's Gate, Gate, baby. Heaven's Heaven's Gate. See, these white people Heaven's know that Gate. shit. <laughs> no, there's no nigga, no nigga. Are you, nigga, no are you taking the next trip out of space? <laughs> yeah. Ah, so, so you joining the let's, Hey, let's put that guy up here. What's his name again? You want to see it? You're going to show us something? Yeah, nigga. You know, that's like white people shit. Them. Like, when you go for, like, uh... Death insurance or life insurance, they ask you, do you jump out of airplanes? Yes. Do you canoe up white water? Nah, motherfucker. That's him right there, CNN, baby. Oh, Let's scared. check him out. I don't think I've ever seen this. I'll be oh, honest. You, I you, didn't ooh, either. they're not looking at that beautiful house. They done. This is 97. How many people? You want to find out. I want him talking. I want you to So this him. guy gassed everybody to kill himself, yeah. right? Come on, we gotta go to the next one. I want them to hear him talking to y'all. Nah, All right. go, go down. He wants to see the guy talking. Go down, yeah, yeah. Here we go. See that pretty face he got over there. He looks <laughs> evil. This is what's going Mike on. Mike just be pulling there. up wild shit. We <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta hit him with facts, Joe. Hit motherfuckers fact. with facts. Summer Yeah, do I want to watch this? Yeah, I don't you do. Know. You do. Why? Check it out. What do I get out of this? Because I want you to know these are the people that we're living among. Okay. You live among these There's people. There's some fucked up people we're living amongst, right? We're all a bad lot, all of us. All right, I'm going <laughs> to open mine. Language a couple thousand years ago, disciples. Those who are trying to prepare themselves for entry. Look at the eyeballs not moving at his all. His ears right are up. mad big, too. Human Look at his eyes. Synonymous with the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. the kingdom of heaven. We're going to talk to you he mastered about it. He actually the most nice. urgent thing that is on our mind and what we suspect is the most urgent thing on the minds of those who will connect with us. Mm -hmm. We'll title this tape, 
uh, planet Earth about to be recycled. Mm. Your only chance to evacuate <laughs> is to leave with us. Whoa! Planet Earth about to be recycled. Ah! He repeated Your this. Your only it. chance to survive or evacuate. Well, anyway, let's just, let's turn this off. But this is who we're talking about. Why do you watch yeah. this type of shit? Huh? Why do you watch that? Something I enjoy watching. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's crazy. That's different. Your eye might. That shit's crazy. <laughs> It's fascinating to you, right? No, like listen, this... no, no, not, not that it's fascinating to me. It's like, that person's in this room. No one knows. That guy's in this room. Or one of the people that are sus no, that's like, a susceptible fact. to, to that's that. That's a fact, because, you know, when you get somebody, let's say Donald Trump, right? Donald Trump was, all right, politicians are born and raised to be, when they're kids... Somebody's teaching them how to smile. It's all a plan. They all yeah. gonna be politicians. Donald Trump is about the only guy that was a regular guy, well, a billionaire, that became president. They never the been a politician. Wrestled in WWE. Never, never like, been in a politician. Like this guy never thought he was never gonna be the politician. president, right? So now he becomes the president. He's a regular dude. Regular dude. Like like he said. I say the same thing. In this room, regular person. But yet. He's now making decisions to blow up Iranians, all type of shit. He's killing niggas all over. He was a regular dude walking around Manhattan one day. Now he's elected president, and he's blowing shit up. Every blow him up in Syria, blow him up over here, kill ten thousand. Like it's in the room. The guy's in the room. Donald Trump, you would have never been able to ask him years before, yo, you're going to be president. Are you going to blow up the, the king of Iran? Or are you going to, you would never know. That's, like I was saying earlier, that happened before the planet was even created. It's all written. It's this all is how it's going to be. So do you ever look, look around the room and then think? Think what? Like who's in here? Like. No, I know I, when I'm in here, I say, I wonder if that's my relative 20,000 years ago, 100,000 mm. years ago. Hmm. How did I look 100,000 years ago? I mean, my 100,000 year old grandparents, how did I, were they black? Were they white? Were they English Asian? What were they? Who were they? What was their purpose? What led up to me? Since the beginning of life in my family, what led up to me? What was that? Something we'll never know. You believe that? I could tell you something. This lady came up to me, and I don't believe in, like, spirituals and all that. She was like, yo, you were a pharaoh in your past life. You wouldn't... Did you she would ask just, you for money? She said you would just get people <laughs> killed like nothing. You could do whatever. And I'm like, I was liking the shit she was telling me. You know what I'm saying? Randomly in Bell Harbor out of all people. Oh, lady, my God. Lady come up to me. She was, you were a pharaoh in your Old past Old Jewish life. lady? No, it was a lady in white. She was like in the uh, Santeria or something. She was like, you was a pharaoh. You used to get people killed. You didn't even have to... Touch it, th and I was just like, I was liking the shit she was saying. Did she ask you for money? At no, any point? I got the fuck away from that lady <laughs> okay. so fast. That's what my wife believes. I don't believe. believe this. Wife and believe I got you out sound of just it. like my wife. My wife believed that. What? Get the fuck away from me? Um, divine intervention, that kind of stuff. No, I believe in divine intervention. I know so for a fact. On this earth, my in wife my life, believed that we were together, and she betrayed me and did something bad to me. She, yeah, she, it, it, listen. Yeah, it's really You be watching that guy up there on YouTube. No. Mm. No, nah, but I know for a fact it's divine intervention. It has to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, Have you experienced that? Yeah, what? a million times. Tell us one. Back when I used to sell drugs, nobody could sell drugs on our block. It's just what it was. So one day these Dominican niggas came and they was hustling. We shot the block up, right? Uh, the next day, I was walking with a girl, and a van jumped out, and it was 10 Dominicans, these Dominicans, strapped like a motherfucker, right? And they, and they had every right to shoot me, and uh, my man Opie was just driving by, and he was on a motorcycle, and he stopped, and he was like, yo, what's up? This is my brother. And they was like, no, Opie, he shot at us, this, that. He was like, nah, fuck that, that's my brother. 
And even though they had 10 guns, they respected Opie or his relationship with them. That was divine into, like, I was supposed to die. There's mm -hmm. just no way. And I got so many instances of that where there was things I could have did that went, I'll tell you another one, right? So they, they, they was trying to, they was trying to trap me, you know. You got caught with that fed stuff too, right? No, 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 no. They was trying to get me, right? So I, I really sold a lot of drugs before I rapped. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you explained. Then I rapped like Cinderella and stopped doing, you know, crimes and all that. So they, when they finally found out, when everybody started getting locked up, the feds was like, this motherfucker got away. This motherfucker got away. So they was mad as fuck as me, right? So I'm rapping now. So now I'm legitly... Now, I mean, I don't give a fuck if I'm starving. I'm not taking no drug money. I'm not robbing no nigga. I ain't doing nothing, right? So I'm so legit, and they kept watching me and watching me, and they was trying to figure out how to grab me, right? So long story short is there was these kids, right, that was killing everything in the Bronx. They was killing everything. Like every, they were murderers, mass murderers, right? And so one day, one of them asked to see me. He was like, yo, tell Joey we want to see him, this and this. And I'm rapping already, you know, I'm Fat Joe, Fat Joe. And so I'm like, this nigga want to see me. So we go over there, you know, we like, we don't know what they want. So, you know, we over there beyond strap, right? So we go see him. So the guy starts talking to me and I'm like, oh shit, this nigga's cool. He's actually looking out. Yo, Joe, be careful. If you got any guns, uh, stash them. My guys in the feds telling me they, they're about to lock you up. Yo, Joe, the drugs, take it somewhere. I'm like, yo, bro, I rap. I keep trying to tell a nigga, yo, I rap, I rap. What you, like, I don't sell drugs. No, the drugs, the guns, put them away. They're going to come. They get so he came in. So I remember after he talked to me like that, these, these niggas was killers, mass murderers. When he was talking to me, like, I remember getting the car, I said, man, that's a cool dude, man. That nigga really tried to look out for me, man. I never, I don't even know him. He's a cool dude. So I'm driving away because I'm totally legit. Two days later, the dude gets killed. They told me that. He gets killed. On the newspaper, they had the FBI's number one informant. Most likely, they, they, whoever killed him, they're going to charge him for killing a fed. The guy had a wire on and was talking to me. They, they went and got their best one who could kill anybody talking to me to make me say, yo, I'ma stash the drugs. Yo, I'ma stash the gun, yo, because most people ain't as paranoid as me. They just get to talking and, and even if, you know. So I, I said, damn, man, they send it. All these years later, still rapping. There's so wow. many instances of that where I know God saved me to do whatever better in life. You know, and uh, it ain't to rap. It's to do better shit in life and look out for people. And whatever the case may be, I think I got greater shit to do uh, as far as, like, giving back. So when we do stuff like, you know, the Bronx fire victims with a Muslim, African Muslims. Died. I'm not hip. We, well, we raised, like, two million. Puerto Rico, we sent a million pounds. Yeah. Like, so, you know, Fat Joe is like the new, yo, Joe, we need the help. And so we go and we help. You're the people. missionary. Yeah, I'm the missionary. My well, son, actually, my son I'm, is a missionary. Yeah, I'm a missionary to where you know when something go wrong, they call Joe and he makes it happen. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like that might be it. I don't know what the future is, but I know why he saved me so many times. Where I could tell you, I I was supposed to go. Wow. You're supposed to you're supposed to see somebody before you go, inspire somebody, something. It's just um, I think it's all about. Evolution, mm. being the better person than you are when you started. I think That's we all that. That's what I believe that. I think we all that. Yeah. But, it, but we can even go to that next level of love and self-love. That's why a lot of people, um, most people from where we come from, they're successful because um, they didn't like where they came from. Not that they hate the, 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 the ghetto, they just didn't want to be there. They mm. didn't want to live there anymore. I didn't want to live there. I knew that shit early. And I was the king of the ghetto. And so, no, I'm telling you. You're like, and I'm I love my projects, and I knew every, if in my projects, it could have been the darkest day on earth. I knew the lady walking, whose mother it was, who this. I knew my projects like nobody else. But I also knew, since I was 12 years old, I don't want to be here. 
Like, mm-hmm. I knew, like, yo, I got to get money, get out of here. I remember I tell the story all the time. I was talking to my man, Louie, one day. We was only 12 years old. And, and the Bronx looked like niggas blew that shit up. Like, you know, it was straight uh, war zone. Yeah, it was bad back and then, And so too. I'm sitting there looking, and we ain't got no social media, no nothing. I remember telling Louie, yo, this shit ain't for me, bro. I got to get rich or die trying. I got to get the fuck out of here. All this poor shit. And he was like, what are you saying, Joe? What do you mean? Like, he had no clue. He couldn't understand what I was... Like, man, fuck this shit. Nigga, I got to get to the bag. Mm. Like, I got to get to this money. I'm, I'm not with it. I knew it. 12 years old, I knew. And, yo, I wasn't with the poor shit. Like, I, I ain't going to be poor. The broke I don't want to be poor. With the broke shit. Mind, yeah. yeah, yeah, I ain't trying to be broke. I don't want to be broke. I want the Benz. <laughs> I want the Beamer. I want the fly shit. And I want it now. How about that? I always think that's fascinating when somebody's like that young and has vision like that, that is not taught vision. Nobody taught you that. It wasn't like your people around your block was like, yo, you could be this. You could have oh, no. that. It's almost like the opposite of that. But the fact that a 12-year-old could even have vision enough to know that something else is possible for myself. You know what I learned during success or whatever it is that I am that um, <laughs> it's just um, it's just us loving ourselves. That's the biggest gift we have to you know accomplish is loving ourselves. You know how difficult it is to love yourself? We think about all the fucked up shit we did cause people to die, this and that and we feel like we don't deserve love you know because we did fucked up shit and I think everybody you know Everybody should have the mercy of God mm-hmm. trust upon them. And no one did anything that bad mm-hmm. that he shouldn't have the mercy of God. That's just what I believe. Everyone should get mercy, no I matter what you they gotta do. Black it, you got to black it out. So what happens, with, the only way I do it is I black it out. Somewhere in my mind um, that... We did terrible things growing up or whatever the case may be, but I just black it out. I can't go back and dwell on that or even think about it. Like, Why I don't would never, you? I never think about my sister. My sister passed away giving birth. She was in a coma for eight eight months. And it's not that I don't love my sister. If I die and the, and, and, and the truth is you get to see your people that die before you, then I'll be with my sister jumping up and down, hugging her to death. But I cannot go there because that's going to take me into that dark place where I don't want to go. Mm. And so certain So you don't things, think about it? Nah, I black all that shit out. Everything I don't terrible. know how healthy that is. Yeah, I don't know. That's I don't know cool. if it's healthy or not. I look pretty good. My yeah. skin is great. Oh, your skin where is the fuck good. you, you want me to do? Like, yeah, like, yeah. Listen, <laughs> everybody <laughs> has their own me- uh, coping mechanisms. Like, you know I, yourself I enough do to this. know. When I have adversity in my life, when I lose somebody I love, I tell them I'm achieve more. I'm be more successful. Uh, they inspire me to do more and be the best I can be. Because yeah. the, the, I hate to even say this, but the best thing, one of the best things that ever happened to me is that my mother passed away. Because I was a little boy. I slept with my mother since I was six, till I was sixteen. And um, she passed away. You said that's one of the best things. Yeah, because um, I you wouldn't got have, over it early. I, I wouldn't have been who I was today. My mother would mm-hmm. hug me and kiss me, have me in bed with until I'm probably 20. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> You'd still be there. Yeah, I slept with my mother until I was 16. Wow. And um, once she passed away, I uh, I just, uh, I based my whole success, I, I blessed, uh, I wanted her to bless me. I thought, you know what's crazy? Is recently so I went through some shit, man, and I just went to my mother and father's house and I slept there and it felt so peaceful and I had to get my mind and my thoughts together. You know, because so, something that happens to me is when uh, the biggest, the shit that fucks with me, Mike, is when people I trust steal from me. Wow. Um, you know, really? that, that betrayal right there. Why would that bother you? That bothers me bad. Dig, right? And so, and so it's always, it's never a guy with a mask or with a gun. It's always somebody you trust and you smile and you're an accountant, a this, a that. And when you catch them stealing... That shit devastates me, B. And I, it's you just, don't look at that as a class in life. How to how to healthily how to be healthy with trust. How to, you know what do you think? People stole millions, probably tens of millions from me, right? Mm-hmm. But I had so much money, I didn't even really notice. I didn't even care, you know. But that's just that's just the, the pains in life. Or your wife cheating on you. Or your wife don't love you anymore. You know, these are this is a test that we have to handle in love. And like, oh, yeah, well, maybe yeah, you yeah, don't you love them no it. more. 
You got I, I I know how to handle it. You understand what I'm saying? But it's just the betrayal when you when you could when you because I'm I got such a good heart like you that I don't I like to see everybody do good. I like to give to everybody. And, and so when somebody has to cross that line of actually stealing from me. It's the one thing I won't forget. Well, an enemy can never steal from you. Only a friend. Mm -hmm. Only a friend. You know, Because you let friend. him that close, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. That's probably why you get yeah. so mad, because somebody that you don't trust or, or love, they can't get close enough to you to steal yeah, from you. Yeah, you over here looking at these kids. The, the kids come for the birthday parties, this, that, and you, happy graduation, and you all good. And then you find out uh, four years later, this 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 woman is stealing from you, or this guy's stealing. That shit is just incredible to me. You know, it's just one. Everybody got their own kryptonite. I just realized I have no kryptonite when it comes to that perspective because I expect people to be what they are. You know, we're a bad lot when you really think about me. It's people in general are a bad lot. You know, and we only and we only loyal as long as that loyal enough. To be loyal, this it still helps us. And sometimes, if they're not loyal anymore, if it can't help us to get anything out from people, fuck them. We use oh, yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I set them got up. one of them buttons, though. Yeah. That's another Too thing. Too emotional. About me. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't you ever take it from Mike? No, no. Don't I, do no, it. I'm, I'm, no, what I'm saying is, mm -mm. you know, I can love you to death. The minute you cross me, it's over. You, 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 it's the fuck you, fuck your mother, you fuck everything. Like, the best revenge is massive success. Yeah, I, I <laughs> That's agree. That's the best revenge. I say yeah. that all the time. That's the massive best. Massive success. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with that if somebody betrays you to cut. That's what you're supposed to do, right? They're growing. You're supposed this, to protect yourself. That's another class, brother. How do we pick the right person? That's another class. <laughs> mm. You ain't lying. Oh, oh, oh you got to educate yourself on certain things that, you know, we hire people to do stuff for us. Mm -hmm. You know, most likely you you can educate yourself in doing that. That way you don't need these fucking people around you. But I think of it like this. I think of these people, the universe brings them to me because the um, the universe is testing me and see if my heart's going to turn black because people took advantage of me. Mm -hmm. I just look at life as a big test from the, the most powerful universe. Mm -hmm. I don't believe... If I got shot today, that's the way the book was writ written. It's all been written, I believe. Meeting each other, everything's that's been written. That's how my father thinks, too. So you just think been, everything that happens as this is what was supposed yeah, to happen? Absolutely. Is what it is. My mother, my sister dying of a cocaine overdose or something, anything. Whatever it was, she had a heart attack, whatever it was, obesity, whatever it was. You take it for what it is. Yeah, take it for what it is. My you daughter know, dying at four, I take it for what it is. You know, it was interesting, I was just looking at both of you talk. You both have had, um, at this stage in your life, a different, you have like a different life and a different career. Like you both have like, like Mike, young Mike is, I mean, this Mike is a different Mike, right? Like Absolutely. You, and, but you also, not just in real life, but you've made it part of your career, is this different elevation of yourself. Where Joe, also in the past couple of years, we've seen you become this, you know, media personality. The guy that we all know, of course, but, like, you figured out a way to take your real life and have it be the elevation of that Ooh, into your career, which is... It's not easy for a lot of people. Nah, That's why a lot of people are not here as long as y'all you know, been here. You know, me personally, I just... just was just being me and just turned the camera on and, and, and just people were like, oh, shit, I didn't know he was funny. I didn't know he was cool. I, I know his music. I like his music. But I really ain't know Joey was like this. Or Joey was uh, well-versed in so many different topics and shit like now, that. Now, why do you just, say that? Is it because you're a rapper and things you say? I would think, I would think so. I would think, and, then, you know, when we came out, it was all about the mystique. It was uh, that whole shit when you walking in the ring, not looking at nobody, sweating. That, that was just a whole mystique to it. was it. just an era. That's the era. Yeah, that was the era we came in. Rakim, I never seen Rakim one time in my life in the club. Right. Like, so back in the day, it was about, yo, you never see him. So my thing was like, He's I was so with Biggie Smalls. He's so disciplined. He's a real disciplined guy. I was right? with Biggie yeah. Smalls every day and never took a picture with Biggie Smalls because at the time, it was considered sucker shit to take pictures. Listen... Dig, right? Think about this. Listen, um, when I was younger, but I went to boxing, I, still, I understood people. I've been all over the world and traveled. I'm, with my, I'm in Brownsville, and some guy saw me as an amateur when I was fighting. He must have watched. He said, hey, how you doing? I've seen you. I said, well, thank you. And my friend said, Mike, you know that guy? I said, nah, what the fuck you laughing at this nigga for? 
I would say, be, I wanted to say, but I didn't want to, he didn't want to, I wanted to say, well, I, I box and he saw me on television, but it's just, you don't do that in Brooklyn. You don't mm-hmm. talk to nobody, mm-hmm. don't look at nobody if you don't know him. That's just the life I always knew. And that was the, the, the shit was like, you wow. know, you you was a sucker if you asked somebody, let's take a picture, mm-hmm. let's do. You never fact, that, you never that. Go when people never said, that. People said, take pictures, you be like, nah, nah, I don't take pictures. Hey, never that. The you only pictures you took on the 42nd Street. 76 pictures with Biggie? <laughs> like, you, you like, I'm. I'm but it took you to evolve. It took you to evolve to be at the place and the comfort level oh, you are now. Ain't showing none of the just, stuff, the questions we need to ask. Are she man. saying we got to rap? Well, we got more. Oh, we got to rap. <laughs> we got for the other one. We talked about life so deep in this motherfucker yeah. <laughs> that those you know, questions Joe, wasn't going to do no justice to this shit. Yeah, and all that stuff that he's already that he's talked about. You all right, I got to talk, talk this shit. All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of another episode of Hot Boxing. Mike Tyson. Angie Martinez. Joey Crack. Joey Crack. I want you to look at tens of millions of people here, Joey Crack. What do you want them to find you at? Well, find me on you Instagram want. anywhere at Fat Joe. Uh, it's about to go down. Book of Jose. Book of Jose comes out in November. You're going to really love that book. Uh, and other than that, stay tuned. Thank you. Love you, my brother. Love you, Joey. Love you. Joey!